Hey. Hey y'all. Oh. <laughs> hey y'all. What's up? <laughs> now I'm overthinking it. Okay. Hey y'all, you know the intro. I'm here with Jillian, my assistant coach for Team Loco Fit. We're going to be doing a coaching series. So it's gonna be a three-part YouTube series on coach-client relationships. But first, give yourself a little intro. Hi, uh, I'm an assistant coach. I'm also a client of Lawrence for the past two-ish years. And I'm a master's student in the exercise science program at USF. Um, yeah, so, yeah, that's it. Uh, nothing else. So, yes, Jillian is awesome. She's being very shy right now, and she's amazing. So, you got your bachelor's in nutrition yeah. um, up in New York, and then she moved down here to do the same master's program that I was in with Dr. Campbell, who's the best. Everybody knows that. Um, and if you haven't seen my videos with him on this channel, go check those out. They're amazing. She's good. Yeah, no, they're super good. Um, so yeah, she's been doing awesome research there um, and helping out a lot. And then she's been an assistant coach for several months now for Local Fit, and it's just really exciting. So we wanted to make this um, this coaching series because we had a lot of questions about this. And yeah. the first part of the series is actually what to look for in a great coach. It's probably the question I get yeah. the most. Yeah. Um, How to choose that coach? Yeah. And all that. Like, what should you be looking for? So I would say first and foremost is education, and this could be both the you know, traditional schooling as well as experience. So obviously, um, like we just said, Jillian has her bachelor's, now she's getting her master's. Same with me, I have my bachelor's and my master's. Um, I did research, she's most likely gonna be doing a research project as well. So I really value this. Karina, our other assistant yeah. coach, is also in school. Yeah. She just, yeah, she is in a research lab right now. I mean, there's a lot, like we very much value that. But we also value experience. Like you, yeah. you've learned so much through your experience as yeah. a competitor and being overweight, being underweight, I mean, so many things, yeah. right? So you know, it gives me kind of a good basis of experience to be empathetic with my clients with, and you know, I've been there, so it's both personal experience and educational. Yes, too. you can't have one without the other. Um, in my opinion, I think both together is the best combination if you can have somebody who's formally educated as well as experienced. Um, but some people do really great self-education. Yeah. Like Ryan is a really great example of this. Like he did not do the traditional schooling route. Yes, he has a bachelor's, um, but it was not an exercise science, but he has read and researched and yeah. listened to more about exercise science and training than any person I know. Like he could school people up and down on training all day long, but he doesn't have the degree or the fancy certifications. Yeah. So you and I, my, my coach, Cliff, same thing, does not have a degree in the field, but arguably one of the best coaches out there. And that's because he's done a ton of self-education. John Gorman's a great example of this too. Um, so if you are somebody who is capable of doing the self-education and teaching yourself and, and realizing that value, you don't mm -hmm. have to go the traditional schooling route. Yeah. So it really just depends. But in general, if you're looking for somebody as a great coach, I would look for somebody who kind of yeah. has, who's as well-rounded. Yeah. Yeah. I would say one or two, but a mix of those two are pretty optimal. Yeah. It's going to gonna be the best. And then, of course, you're going to, like, once you find out more about the person, you can yeah. make that decision. Um, so, number yeah. two. Number two <laughs> is find someone who listens to you. Someone who understands what you're going through. Someone who can be empathetic to you as a client and where you're coming from and the experiences that you're experiencing. Uh, you know, trying to lose weight. <laughs> yeah. Trying to lose weight, trying to compete, all that. Find someone who can really understand where you're coming from. Yeah, and this goes for the whole part of the check-in process. So we mm -hmm. have a very specific check-in process um, with questions that we ask and you know, we're trying to get certain information from clients. And when we're reading that information, we're not necessarily audio listening. Yeah, it's not like it goes one in one ear yeah. out the other. Like we actually need that information so yes. that we can, you know, use it to get a better idea of where you're coming from and what's going on. Yeah, and then from there, that's where you make adjustments and that's where you maybe ask more questions. Um, and you have to be open to that. And if you know, there's plenty of coaches who just don't listen, they say, "Oh, just do this yeah. or just follow this plan or whatever." So whether it's you know a written form or even if we are on the phone with the client, because yeah. that does happen too, you have to be willing. You have to have, be a good listener to be a good coach. And yeah. so when people are are you know maybe reaching out to different coaches, I don't want to say interviewing them, reaching out to different yeah. coaches. Um, is there somebody who's like picking up on the questions that you're asking? Is it somebody who's willing to get on the phone and talk with you through things? Like that's something that Jillian's really good at. Um, and so is Karina. So there's just different ways that you can pick up on that, but looking for a good coach when you, once you've started working with them, are they listening to you? Yeah. And are, or are they just are they, blowing off your questions? Yeah. Are they trying to understand you and try to get to know you 
as a client because mm-hmm. this is a relationship too. Yeah. You know, a coaching client relationship. Find someone who wants to know about you and wants to figure out how to help you best. Yeah, and get to the root problem because if you're just like, yeah, just follow my program, that's not. I mean, there is a place to just following the program, yeah. like executing, but you also have to, you know, be in a good place. Be, yeah. So that would be three, which kind of leads to this, is empathetic yet stern. So it's yes. a very big dichotomy. Um, you can't be too soft. You can't be, can't too, be too mean and scary. It, really, you don't want to be scary. Like yeah. If you're a scary coach, that's not going to last very yeah, long. You don't want to have a coach that you're scared of or you don't want to you know, upset or something like that, you know, or open up to, cause ultimately yeah. like that's going to be you holding back maybe some information that's going to be really pertinent for us to know. Yeah. And if we don't know that we can't make appropriate changes. So if you're scared to check in with a coach or tell them that you went off plan or tell them like what you're feeling, that's not going to work out. But likewise, if you're too like mushy gushy of a coach and then you're getting like walked all over, yeah. that's not going to be good, that's not good either. You know? either. Um, there, this does have to be a working relationship. It can't just be only feelings and just, you know, you have to have the empathy. Yeah. You have to be able to feel kind of what the client's going through and understand it and relate it back to yourself. Yeah. But you have to be stern enough to say, hey, we got to, you know, get you're, our plan. You're finding a coach who can both hold you accountable for what you're trying yeah. to do and also understand and be empathetic to shit that happens in life, basically. Yeah. Because shit always happens I promise. Life happens. and that's something that I like have loved about you and Karina as coaches is because that's something that I really look for in people so okay you have to be able to have this balance of listening and empathy but also being stern when it's necessary and that's something that I've developed over time as a coach and if you are somebody who's just starting out with a coach it's pretty obvious within the first few weeks if somebody yeah, is gonna right. be doing all these traits you yeah. know what I mean um, like, are they listening? Are they being understanding? But also, are they holding you to your shit? Because if they're just like saying, yay, it's yes. fine every time, oh, it's then, okay. then you're gonna be upset because you're not gonna make progress either. Yeah. And no, ever, at the end of the day, like you hired a coach to make progress. So yeah. you, there has to be some kind of stern relationship here as well. Which leads to the fourth one is someone who is organized. <laughs> yeah, clearly <laughs> my fingers are, I'm like, I'm like, what number are we on? Uh, <laughs> someone who is organized, someone who has a system. So yes. we have a check-in system. We have, you know, designated days where clients check in with us. We have inquiry forms. We have all of that stuff. So, you know, find someone who has a plan, you yeah. know, and remembers things and yes. has your information organized and you know and like I said even down to the details of like when you ask questions are they answering because that's being organized as yes. well if people are always blowing off things that you're asking they're not organized and I found that I was doing this was a mistake I made it in the beginning was the way that I had set up check-ins was v- not conducive to making sure that I hit everybody's questions and everybody's needs so then I changed it because I realized that right so I have to stay organized and say okay what do I need from people? They're going to answer me and then I'm going to respond back to that. Yeah. So, and even down to like the setting up calls, like with new clients, like you are yeah. going to have the, um, it's called acuity. Acuity scheduling. Amazing. Yeah. I don't know why I did this. Lifesaver. <laughs> yeah. I do that for all my posing and I literally operated years with this without it, which is crazy. And then, um, Paula from first form, shout out to Paula, told me about this cause she's on calls all the time. And she's like, you have to use this. And I was like, yeah. Oh my, literally it is it night and day different. So I send it out to clients. They give me, they schedule the time that they want to call and then we connect. Yeah. So like is your, easy. is your coach doing this or are they always forgetting things? Are they never picking up? Are they, I know coaches who forgot peak week plans. I mean, like this stuff is real and it's awful and terrifying. So, um, you know, this isn't a, as important maybe as the other ones, like outright, mm-hmm. but I still think it is it's important. Still, yeah, it's and there's plenty of people who are successful who aren't super organized, but they have yeah. certain things in place that keep them rolling. Yeah, you, know you don't what have mean? to have like a certain plan or setup, but yeah. having some kind of organization and some kind of method for your coaching, then that's something to look for. It means so much better, and and the client's gonna get the most out of that yeah. too. So. Thank you guys for listening. Um, I know, like I said, everybody asks about this. Um, so hopefully these were four easy ways to spot, okay, what makes a great coach. Yeah. And we're going to have two more videos coming out after this. So thank you guys for tuning in and we'll catch you next time. Bye.